Okay, so as before, these aren't the stanzas. I've just split it into four lines to make it easier to fit in my notes at the bottom. So half a league, half a league, half a league onward, all in the Valley of Death, rode the 600. Um, the Valley of Death, now, Tennyson doubted his own Christian faith, but remember his poet laureate, he's writing for the country, and it was a primarily Christian country at the time. And so he's using deliberate biblical allusions here to Psalm 23 in particular to appeal to his readers. So, um, the valley of the shadow of death, that's, that's quoted in this psalm, and basically um, it's in praise of God and saying, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, though I come to terms with my own mortality, and though this may seem very terrifying, um, thou art with me. And so this links to God's protection and the idea of a just war, which is another thing that people believed at that time. It's the same thing in World War One. Um, although there may be subtle irony here as well that um, you know, where, where was God, essentially, when they made that futile charge? Depends which way you want to read it. Forward the light brigade, charge with the guns, he said, into the valley of death, row the 600. So you've got this refrain of 600 all the way through. So anaphora, obviously, is repeated. It's uh, emphasizing the loss. And also, it's an example of metonymy, which is where it can mean, you know, a couple of different things. So it shows, yes, hundreds are killed in this charge, but also... The charge is against impossible odds. They're charging against more than 600 Russians. And so proportionally, it's carried out by very few men. This um, this charge, keeps saying charge, there's no better word for it, is galloping towards the enemy. There aren't enough men. 600 isn't quite enough. Um, and again, it emphasizes the fact that death is inevitable, therefore, but they will follow the orders anyway, because that's what they've been trained to do. For the light brigade, was there a man dismayed? Not though the soldier knew someone had blundered. So you can get quite a bit out of this just last couple of lines. So knew and blundered, they don't rhyme. And um, all the way through, they don't, well, you know, what, what am I trying to say? Oh, yes, yeah, exactly. So the rhyming couplets, they, they don't rhyme. So brigade and dismayed do, but knew and blundered don't. And so they, they break the pattern here. And Tennyson, therefore, is pointing out the blunder and um, the consequences, making this word, these two words stand out. New, he knows something's terribly wrong. Everybody knows something is terribly wrong, even the soldiers. Um, and blundered because somebody made this mistake. This is the cost. And right at the end, you know, we've got the emphasis again on the 600. It's tying together the consequence of this. Um, so at the end of the stanza, you've got the half rhyme. So at the end of the stanza isn't quite on this slide, but I'll put it up next. And anyway, it's, you, you know, it's the same frame as before, uh, same refrain as before, basically. Um, wrote the 600. So 100 and blundered, they don't quite rhyme. So you've got half rhyme here and para rhyme. So the two words are tied together. So again, it shows that because of this blunder, hundreds have died. Um, but this half rhyme unsettles us ever so slightly. And it again calls our attention towards the word blundered. Tennyson is emphasizing this. Interestingly, there is a recording of Tennyson himself um, reading this poem out. Uh, it's very old and crackly because it was done on a wax cylinder, I believe. But um, you can make out the words. And um, when he reads it out, he disrupts the dactyls on new. He focuses specifically on this word and draws attention to it. So he sort of slows down the rhythm slightly and stops. So forward the light brigade, was there a man dismayed? Not though the soldier knew someone had blundered, something like that. So he's really drawing attention to the fact that we all know it was a terrible thing. So even though he has to sort of write this poem in praise of it, there's no getting away from the fact that it should never have happened. Blundered also falls short of the di of the dactylic diameter, um, so it breaks the rhythm a little bit. It's a little bit too um, long, I think. And the word is lifted directly from the newspaper report, the Times newspaper report that I've, I, I showed you earlier. And so Tennyson, once again, is subtly showing his disgust by drawing attention, by drawing the reader's attention to the mistake, to the blunder. However, because he's poet laureate and he can't directly play, uh, point a finger at you know, whoever he's blaming, um, it's named that. So someone had blundered. Um, he's avoiding blaming. So either, you know, on a really surface level, he's either being pretty forgiving um, or he's avoiding censure for writing controversially, even, we, even though we know, you know, Lord Raglin, he was the leader 
it was probably his fault, but it's really high up both in the British military and in British society. And so Tennyson has to pretend that he doesn't really know what happened. But the point of the whole thing is that Tennyson draws attention to the fact that everybody knows something went horribly wrong, and therefore the sacrifice was needless, which is subtly subversive. Or, in the context of the times, the fact that um, even though it was a mistake, and the soldiers all know it's a mistake, the fact that they carry out the order anyway shows their bravery. They will unswervingly perform their duty. So from a modern perspective, uh, we're a little more cynical of authority. We might say that it's absolutely stupid you know, to, to write their certain deaths. In Victorian England, this would have been seen as a pretty noble thing. Because remember, discipline was really important in the fact that they are obeying and have full confidence in their superiors, even when their superiors are making mistakes, is supposedly admirable. Oh, sorry. Um, I, I, obviously, these should, these should come up one by one. I'll correct that uh, in a second.